The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 133 Free Stooges Pickle Punch, Randall, and Lilac blinked at the sudden presence of a bat pony on the stool across from them. Filet's eyes were closed peacefully until she opened them with a cheery grin. Hey ya! Slowly, the two more sober ponies' eyes constricted in recognition and fear, and Randall's lit up with something else. Hey there, he slurred, dropping into a lidded smile and extending a thick, shaky forehoof, spilled drink forgotten. Are you single, hot, hot pony? Lilac decked him with a giant punch from across the table, knocking his jaw askew. Shut up, you idiot, she hissed, eyes frantic. Don't you have any idea who that is? A mare with a hot butt, that's you, Randall groaned deliriously, drooling. Heartened and slightly disappointed by their complete unwillingness to contest her presence at their table, the lady waved a wing, beckoning Maple over. For the free at the table, she held her silence, smiling with just the wrong amount of innocence and betting pickle punch would leave first. Please don't take him personally, Lilac begged with a beseeching demeanor that didn't at all fit her looks or earlier behavior. We do not mean offense or trouble, ma'am. Really? Pickle Punch cowered, holding his forelegs on top of his head. Oh, she's come to arrest me for that stupid work with the spirit, and now my last act as a free pony is going to be laughed at for making a stupid pickle joke, and what is wrong with my life that that is what I'm most concerned about? Meh. Valet sighed, pouting. Arrest you for wrongdoing? That would imply that I was fair, which, if you know me, you should know that I'm not. Besides, the Earth District technically isn't my jurisdiction, so I'd probably just beat you up instead, but you look kind of wimpy, and I'm also here for some downtime, so maybe I won't do that as long as you're funny. Okay? Yes, yes. Pickle Punch nodded as if his life depended on it, furiously agreeing. Way too whippy to lock up here. I just do nothing but fill your jails with bad jokes and metaphors and make all the guards depressed and hate themselves because their outside lives couldn't possibly be as fulfilling as laughing at me, and I don't want to get beaten up. Valet felt a smile tugging at the corners of her mouth as Maple drew up next to her, both fillies in tow. Valet, she asked, blinking. Who are these? They're bystanders, Valet replied innocently, stretching and ignoring the table's previous occupants. Or maybe entertainment. I don't know, really. They're just some random saps unfortunate enough to already be here. Oh, for the best, you know? It sure would be a shame if anything bad were to happen to them. She jabbed a wing at Randall. He's drunk, by the way. Y you say that like, <laughs> like it's a bad thing. Randall smiled with a surprisingly intact set of teeth, letting out a puff of breath that smelled of garlic and vinegar. Right, Maple mumbled warily, taking a lone stool between Valet and Lilac, as far from the drunk stallion as possible. There wasn't room on it for the fillies, so Starlight remained on the floor, guarding a still-dazed redshift. Pickle Punch sized Maple up, weighing his words carefully. So you're like her... Hey, idiot! Lilac jabbed him, hissing out the side of her muzzle. Tell the Defense Force Commander about that bad run-in with our sworn enemies and build us some favor points. It's a roll, whispered inaudibly, not twitching a muscle. Oh, right! Pickle Punch jumped to attention, slightly too eager to please. I was, uh, telling a story when you showed up about the spirit. And don't get the wrong idea now, because even though I was trying to help them, I'm definitely not now. I've changed my ways, I swear. Go, go Stone District! Yeah! He nervously pumped a hoof. Valet smiled, making sure to show off the sharpness of her teeth. So anyway, Pickle Punch gulped, slightly improving his composure. I was in Copswood, okay? The northeastern place? Really close to the, uh... He hissed aside to Lilac. Which factory was it again? The Alpha Factory is on the north bank of the river, Valet helpfully offered. The Beta and Gamma ones are on the south side, and Gamma is east of Beta. Right, thank you. Pickle Punch nodded furiously. So anyway, I was just south of Beta. 
Anyway, as we all know, er, as the spirit says, and I definitely don't believe because I was only there for the money, the Yaks are pure evil and are trying to arm their army to invade and take over the Steel and Earth districts. So what the job was for was to go in there and rob a delivery cart to stop the weapons from arriving. Easy, right? Right. He banged the table, babbling without pause. So we're there, and we find the car totally alone and undefended except for Shinespark, who we know won't fight back because she's too honorable or something. Actually an excellent mayor, if only the times didn't call for playing dirty. Valet's brow creased at his praise for Shinespark, and for a second she bit back a sigh. It no longer mattered when Randall interrupted, loudly belching, And she jingled too. Shut up, Randall. Lilac threw him a glare. She's like half your age and is a hundred times the pony you'll ever be. Pickle? She turned to the meeker stallion. Keep talking. Valet listened as he continued, smile set in stone and ears still forward, but with teeth clenched together slightly harder and slightly more edged to her gaze than needed. Right, uh, Pickle Punch flailed slightly, getting his groove back. Anyway, we made it to the cart, it was totally undefended, and we even had all those awesome toys to play with from other raids, and then it was so weird. There was this griffin, and then someone started a fight, but we were fighting each other, and I honestly was just trying to protect my tail, so I hid behind the wagon. But then the griffin charged, and he had this sword, and it was... it was... His eyes thinned with recollected shock. He had a sword, and Brain stole it because she was there, but not before he had used it. And then, after they all left, it was just us in the clearing. It was like... He swallowed, trembling. There was no blood. Not from the sword. It didn't leave cuts. It must have been cursed or something. But you could see the ponies who had been hit by it, and they were... A minute passed. I don't even know what to say, he managed eventually. They had fallen down. It was like they were asleep, but with their eyes open, and they could move their eyes and look at you and nothing else. They were scared. Like they wanted to scream and couldn't use their mouse. They had just as much of an idea what had happened as I did, only it happened to them. And I couldn't take it. I didn't help drag them back to safety or see if there was anything that could be done. I just turned around and ran for my life. Didn't expect any pay, not for that. Didn't get any either. And that's why I stay out of stuff like this, Lilac hummed darkly. Things like this happen all the time. Going looking for them is suicide. I'll take existence, thank you very much. Easy for you to say, Pickle Punch answered sadly, hanging his head. You're not even from Sosa. You've got no loyalty to it. You're just content to ride out your level three existence and never do anything worth doing for yourself. Level four, Lilac corrected with a sheet of confidence. With how many bottom two refugees they're moving up, I bit the shovel and paid to move up. Don't know why, when I'm back here now, the likes of you two idiots... Besides, you're not a Susan Eaver, Flathead. Pickle Punch ran a hoof self-consciously over his bare forehead, brushing aside a chew lock. My dad was. It's not his fault my mom was an earth pony or that he got out before he could be fired. Lilac smirked. Technically, both of those were his fault. And after calling Sosans filthy cheaters, don't be so hard on us earth ponies now. We might be all that's left that you can get. Hey! Pickle Punch shouted in indignation, banging the table. I would never insult Sosa! And just you watch, someday I'll get a cute unicorn who likes- You were just complaining about how they hired you for a dangerous job, and you didn't even get paid, Lilac drone, still cocky. Valet leaned back, watching. Both of the arguing ponies seemed to have forgotten about her entirely, and while Randall was staring at her unscrupulously, he didn't seem inclined to act on it. It was just as well, as the petty altercation was somewhat amusing and Maple was also left out of it. She slumped tiredly on her stool, which was significantly less comfortable than a bed or couch, but hopefully adequate, with starlight and a still-shocked redshift under the table. On second thought, none of them seemed to be getting much rest. Perhaps it was time to be more proactive in clearing the table for themselves. With a cough, she drew everyone's attention. Ah! Lilac shot bolt upright, silencing Pickle Punch with a hoof. You idiot! You were supposed to be complaining about how bad Sosa was for her, not praising it. And, uh, she relaxed her brows in what was probably supposed to be a sweet, hopeful expression. Would you like a drink? Can we buy you anything? To be good hosts? 
please? Mmm, Valet stretched. Nah, I don't think. Need to keep my brain at 100% all the time. Do keep talking, though. This is interesting. So as I was saying, Pickle Punch began, don't you judge my dad for taking a wife from that one place. It was, um, uh, I don't remember the name, the place on the river when you're sailing out east before you reach the sea. Riverfall, Randall belched eagerly, the haze of drunkenness lifting slightly from his eyes. Now that was a place. Stop there on every single voyage, both in and out. <laughs> in and out. <laughs> a whole place full of mares who all treated you like the best thing ever. It was like the seventh district, and only we got to see it. The world isn't, isn't like it used to be. Hey, Pickle Punch, Lilac slyly poked his foreleg. I think Randall is saying he wants to be your father. What? Pickle Punch's eyes screwed up in confusion. Valet's wings shivered in alarm as she saw Maple's expression cloud with anger. It was time to change the conversation. So, she interrupted, enough with the mares. Keep talking about how awesome this place that ripped you off is. Pickle Punch blushed sheepishly. Look, Brain and her tactics can go like a cactus. I just know there's a war coming and I chose my side, okay? Sosa's are still the ones trying to fix this dump Iron Ridge has turned into and that's enough to earn my loyalty. I'm so confused, Randall mumbled. Why was you attacking your own side then? It's... but... Pickle Punch sputtered. Because of the yaks! We have to purge Sosa of this yak influence and make them give up on the contract so the yaks don't get any of our weapons. Why do they have it in the first place if they're so self righteous and pure? Lilac quizzed. Hey, I never said that. Pickle Punch pulled his hooves to his chest in protest. I mean, I just said they weren't because they gave me that dumb job. But, uh, they're like playing the yaks against themselves by taking all their money and then never delivering. Yeah. And why are you trying to sabotage them? Pickle Punch's eyes constricted. Uh... Sounds to me like you have no idea what you're actually fighting for, Lilac pressed. That's not true, Pickle Punch gasped. I do too. I have, I mean, his eyes met Valet's. You know what? Never mind. I fight for money. I'm a greedy sellout. Please don't beat me up. At that moment, Starlight's voice piped up and her head appeared above the table, standing on Maple's lap. What's the 7th District? She grumbled, eyes bleary. The conversation halted. Eventually, Pickle Punch pointed a hoof, mumbling, you have a filly? Yes, Maple said, still bristling slightly from Randall's remarks earlier. I do. Is that a problem? What's the 7th District? Starlight repeated, insistent. Ponies are always mentioning it and always saying there's only six. You're not making sense. The 7th District is a myth, Valet droned. What? No, it's not, Pickle Punch quickly protested. Then, realizing that Valet was still present, he shrank. I mean, actually, it probably is. The 7th District is anywhere better than where we're at now, kid, Lilac said with a sigh. For some ponies, that's moving up the mountain. For others, it's that old riverfall place Mr. Drunken Bozo was talking about. Some think it's wherever you go when you die, others say it's the past. Well, the most realistic of us don't believe it exists at all. Her head lowered slightly closer to the table. Would be nice of someone to prove us wrong about that someday. If you ask me, Randall interrupted, the seven district is inside, inside Shine Spark's bed. Hey, Pickle Punch shouted, shooting to his hooves. I thought we agreed that she was a wonderful mare and you weren't allowed to disgrace. And I think, Lilac whispered urgently, covering Pickle Punch's mouth and pointing at Valet, that she just said no more talking about mares. She turned fully, as apologetic as it was possible for a pony to be. I'll be getting out of here now, if you don't mind, before I wind up in jail or at the bottom of the Yule. Whispering loudly, she added, And I strongly recommend you two idiots do the same. Pickle Punch needed no second bidding. Yeah, I'm out of here. Nearly slipping on a gross, chunky patch of spilled something, he bolted for the door, vanishing before Lilac had even left the table. She shot a forlorn glance at Randall, then left herself, not looking back. Alone with Maple, Valet, and the Phillies, 
Randall blinked, still processing his friend's departure. Joel, he began after a long silence, you never did say if you were single. End of chapter 133